Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 109 of Build Your Stash and Craft. And this week we are going to make a tool holder or a tool caddy. And we are going to be using um, one of these uh, tiered shelf units from the dollar store and a piece of foam core board and then some cardboard. What we're going to need, I'm going to give you the... I'm going to let you see this so that you can go back and reference this if you need to. This is going to be how we are going to cut our foam core board. Um, the one that we have is 20 inches wide, or the one from the dollar store is 20 inches wide and 30 inches long. So we're going to need it to be 20 by 25. I've already cut off 5 inches off the end of our board here just to make everything fit on my table a little bit better it's hard to do things with this large of a size but um and then how we are going to cut it is we are going to mark it coming down from the top we are going to mark it at seven inches and across and then we are going to come down to 18 inches and draw a line all the way across and then we'll have two inches left here at the bottom. So it will be seven inches, 11 inches, and two inches will be the size of those three spaces. Then we are gonna come in seven inches from one side, and we are gonna come in seven inches from the other side, or seven and 18, so that we will have an 11 by 11 square in the center, and we're gonna build the box to hold our tool caddy. Now, I have that all marked down on here, um, these corners will be coming off except for just a little space on the end of these two uprights. And um, so I have all of that marked here. And now that I have it marked, what I want to do is I want to set my... This is going to be so hard to do. Sorry for all the shaking. But I want you to be able to see here what I'm doing. Okay, so here is the square that's going to hold my tool caddy. I want to take my tool caddy and set it in there and just make sure that I am actually going to be able to fit it in there. And side to side, it's going to have a little bit of room over here, not much. And front to back, it's going to be um, pretty tight. So, And that's how we want it to be so that it doesn't move around. So it is going to fit in here by the looks of it. And so now we are going to make our cuts. So we are going to cut and score cut this piece. I don't know, here's my knife. Didn't know what I did with my knife. So what I mean by score cut is when you score cut something, you only cut in a piece of foam core board, there is a piece of paper, then there's some foam, and then there is another piece of paper. When you score cut one, all you do is you just cut the piece of paper on one side and that's all you cut through. You don't cut through everything. And so what the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to score cut both of these up and down lines. And again, all we're gonna do is just, whoops, I lied. Let me, oh, this is so hard. Okay, up here at the top, we've got this little extra on each side that we are going to keep. We're gonna keep the width of the foam core board at the top so that when we fold this up and we fold this flap up where they meet, this will overlap. So we are going to not score cut that because we want that to be a solid piece all the way from, I'm gonna use our paper because it'll be easier. We want it to be solid from the outside of this black mark to the outside of this black mark, which is our piece plus about a quarter of an inch on each side, just enough for the width of the foam cord board when it folds up to sit on there. So first I am going to cut off this square right here, leaving that quarter of an inch. I'm gonna cut off this square and then I'm gonna come down here leave that quarter of an inch and cut off this rectangle. Those pieces we do not need, we just have to remember to leave that quarter of an inch out here. So I'm gonna do that first. And this is actually a cut. I'm gonna cut right to this first line. And then I'm gonna come down here And 
I'm going to cut this line down here, leaving the little quarter of an inch piece there. So we're going to cut these and get them out of the way. Then there won't be any confusion because we know we have to take these off. And what I use as a cutting mat is I just have a piece of cardboard here, a nice heavy piece of cardboard, so that I don't cut through my tablecloth. If you have a ruler that has a metal edge, it's easier than a plastic blade or a plastic ruler because um, sometimes your knife will want to peel your plastic ruler. But what I have is a plastic ruler, so that's what I'm using. And I'm going to turn this. So that I can get this off of here and again remembering that I had to keep that so I don't want to go all the way over and there we go so now we've got that I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and just cut off those couple of pieces remembering to leave that quarter of an inch and actually I just drew a line there it's not anything I didn't measure it okay so I've left that there come down and do the one on the other end leaving that quarter of an inch and then remove those two corners we don't need those pieces but we can always use that for something later on Again, I'm going to start this cut right at that quarter of an inch line. Remove that piece. And this piece, just coming right to that quarter of an inch mark. There. So now this is what it looks like. And what I'm going to do, because it you can't see this whole thing all in one step, we started out with 20 inches by 25 inches on our board. And right there are the numbers. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this out. This is going to be our piece of foam board. Foam board. So you'll have to rewind it to see those numbers if you need to see them again because we are going to cut this piece of paper just like our foam core board. That way you can actually see what it is I've done here. There. So we started out with a piece of foam core board this big. And now what we did is our line comes right straight down here. We moved over a quarter of an inch on our foam board. And we just cut up to the first line. And we removed this piece right here with the X on it. Then we did this one. And again, just to that, leaving that quarter of an inch on the outside of this flap up here because these are all going to fold up that's why I call them flaps and then we did the same thing to the other side and this is the 25 inch way this is the 20 inch way and finally we're going to cut this last flap off right here So this is just what my foam core board looks like right now. It has this little two inch flap on the front, the seven inch flap on the, on the back, and the seven inch flaps on both sides. Now we're going to score cut it. So what we're going to do, couldn't find my ruler. Okay, this is the back. Actually, this is the front of our box, and we are just going to score cut, just cut the paper all the way across, not cutting through the foam, and then give it a fold. So now it looks like this. Okay. 
And then what we're going to do is do the same with the back. And just score it, just score that piece of paper. Don't cut the foam core board. Fold that one up. And now we've got, this is our back, and this is our front. And I'm sorry this is so close. Maybe I could put my tripod up a little bit. Um, I'll leave it for now. Okay, now we're gonna go and we're gonna do the same thing to both sides, but we are just going to score from where it's folded already, we're gonna score it this way. We don't need to score up here on the back panel or the front panel. We don't need to score those anymore. We scored this way and that's it. Now we're gonna score here. So I just scored all the way across, including that little quarter of an inch mark, all the way across on both sides, and scored all the way across here. Now we are going to score from this line to this line and this line to this line so that this whole box will fold up. And again, we're just going to score cut, so just cut the paper. Give that a fold, now we've got one side. And now, I'm going to score cut the other side. And I'm just doing just the flap here, not the little extra quarter inch marks out here. Just cut the paper and give that a fold. And now when we fold this up, these sides fold up. And because we left that extra quarter of an inch on the back, when the back folds up, they will meet each other like this. Otherwise, if we hadn't left that quarter of an inch, this would have been cut right here and they would have met like this. And that doesn't give you any kind of a stability. There's nothing there for them to meet. So that's why we did that extra quarter of an inch. So now on both sides in the back, it overlaps like that. And here is our front. And when we fold up the front, it does exactly the same thing. So that folds up and those two match up just like that. All right. so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue along here and here and fold this up and do the same with the front and fold it up. Um, actually, no, I lied. Now what I am actually going to do is I'm going to kind of cut this at an angle because our thing starts very tall and then it gets very short. So I'm just going to mark where my... I don't know what I did with my pencil. Okay, I'm going to fold up my front flap and fold up my side flap. And I'm just going to put a mark right here where the front flap is. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Let's do it this way. I'm going to fold up this front just like that. And then I'm just going to put a little mark right here. And that mark right there, that is where this flap comes up to. So I'm going to just cut from here on an angle all the way up to the back corner. So I'm just going to put my ruler on that mark that we marked. And then at the very top of the back corner, all the way up here. And then I am just going to cut that off. And so now our side looks like that. And I am going to do the same thing over here. Just cut this off. And then I'm going to glue it all together. Just glue the sides up and wrap some masking tape around the bottom. I'm going to raise up my tripod so that you can see better. I do apologize that this was like this, but hopefully by being able to see the diagram, 
here. And what I've done is I have just cut from the corner. Well, that's not right. <gasps> Messed that up. I need to cut it right to here. As we fold up our box, that's where our front piece is going to be. That's where I needed to make my mark. So I'm cutting from the corner. To that point right there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then fold that up. And now if we fold this up, it's going to look just like our box looks. It even has this little extra quarter inch flap that comes up. Although on here it would wrap around because this is only paper, but on our box it just matches up. And so this is what our box looks like now. So I'm going to glue this together. I'm going to glue it right straight down here on that quarter inch mark that we had left over. We have a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch over here, quarter of an inch down here and a quarter of an inch over here. I'm going to put glue on there. I'm going to glue this together. And then I am going to put some masking tape starting right here at the top, all the way around and again at the bottom. And then I will be back with a hopefully raised tripod. Okay, I'm back, and this is as high as I can get my tripod. I'm sure this is going to be much better. So this is what the box looks like after I just folded up the back and the front, glued it to the sides, and see the back meets up with each side, just like that. And then I went ahead, I put glue on it, and then I put masking tape on it. Again, the front meets up with the sides also. And... I put masking tape on it and glued those ends together and then put the masking tape on. So this is what it looks like. Now what I want to do at this point um, is try my shelf and make sure that it works. And it does. I have some room left over here, which I did want when I measured. I left it a little bigger um, so that I can stack larger things in there. And it fits front to back really well, nice and solid. We will be fixing this up in just a little bit but we're gonna finish the box first. And so I did just put a couple of rows of masking tape all the way around. And then the other thing that I want to do is at the bottom where we scored it and then folded it, we have this bit here. And I'm gonna show it to you in a smaller piece. So when you fold, when you score the paper and then fold your foam core, it looks like this. Okay, and the only thing that's holding that together is the piece of paper on this side of the foam core board. So what we're going to do is we're going to take four of our skewers and lay them into that fold just like this. Just like that, and then put a piece of tape over that. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll decoupage the whole thing to make it nice and sturdy. But this is how we're going to, here is our, here's the spot where the back and the front come together. I'm going to put this right in here, just like this. And I'm just going to start from one side here, come over to here, the other side is here, so I'm just going to break this off. Because these are gonna be buried, it doesn't matter if we sand it or anything, we just want it the length of our box. I guess if I do it this way, just like that. Now I am going to put in a little bit of tacky glue to hold it because again that will give us even more stability. Whenever you're doing your own um, storage that is, you know, something that's going to be used for storage, you want it to be nice and sturdy because you're going to be using it, taking things in and out, opening and shutting, you know, whatever type of storage it is. But you just want to make sure that you get it as sturdy as you can so that, you know, it lasts you a really long time. 
And there we go, and I'm just pressing that into that glue. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put one on this side. And on this one, here's our stick. It's so hard to... So here's our stick at the front, right there in the little L. This one I am going to put in here and I'm gonna bring it right out to the end of that stick. So this is gonna run the full, all the way from the front, all the way to the back, where the other one just ran from the inside of the fold to the inside of the fold right here. So I'm just gonna take this one and just put it on there like that. Break off this little bit here. And they don't have to be anything exact. This just gives you some stability where it's just paper right now. We're gonna glue in this skewer and then it's going to be much more secure, much more stable. And then we'll do one more here and one more on the other side. And this one I had already broke. So that's already the right size. And then we're going to put some decoupage on this, which decoupage is pretty, um, and it works as a decoration for your project. Um, but also when you're doing storage, I've got some of my masking tape in the way. Um, when you're doing storage, decoupage works as a really nice stabilizer. You've got the glue, the paper, whatever it is that you're decoupaging on, and that makes a really big difference in the sturdiness. Once that glue dries, glue is, uh, PVA is, is like a plastic type glue. PVA is just Elmer's glue, um, you know, the equivalent of Elmer's glue here in the United States, and Elmer's is just a name brand. But um, when that dries, it is a type of plastic and it just helps everything stay more secure. And that is the reason that you do the decoupage. It's not just for decorating. Although it does decorate it up nice if you, you know, choose what you want to put on there. But I have decoupaged things with just with plain old newspaper before and it didn't necessarily look pretty but it's nice and sturdy. It's kind of like, um, I can't think of what you call it. This is my last one, needs to be broken right here. Um, not plaster, uh, paper mache. Basically like paper mache. If you've ever made anything paper mache, how solid that comes out when you're done, that's basically what you're doing when you decoupage. So now I have the sticks all the way around and I am gonna put a piece of masking tape all the way around, but I'm not gonna do that right this second. I'm going to, um, you don't need to watch me do that, I'm just gonna put a piece of masking tape on it. But I wanted to show you next what we're going to do on the bottom of our um, caddy. These are just the cheapy, cheapy paper towels we bought when we first started and I really haven't used them at all because they're so cheap they don't do anything, but they'll work great for this. So I have made some decoupage glue, which is just one part water to two parts glue, and I am just gonna put some of these in the bottom. Now, I'm not gonna put them super flat. I want them to be kind of bumpy because when I put my tools down in there, I don't want them to slide on this really slick surface. So if I make this bumpy, um, then when my tools go down in there and, and the base of the tool hits the bottom, it's not sliding and sliding all over the place. That bumpiness holds it up nice and straight. And now you don't, you know, you don't want to make it too, too bulky. Um, but you do want some wrinkles and crinkles in there so that your tools can, they have something to catch on basically. We're just trying to rough up the bottom with this paper towel and this is a good thing to use this paper towel for since it's really not good for wiping anything up or drying your hands or anything like that but it does work good for things like this and then you can bring it right up the side a little bit if you want to that just is going to sturdy up that those corners those folds there 
So I'm just going to do this across the whole bottom until my whole bottom is decoupage down or until all of this is decoupaged onto the bottom. And if it rips, no big deal because this is just about the texture and not even texture for looks, but texture to hold your tools. So I'll show you what this looks like a little bit up close as soon as I finish this one piece. And then I will go do the rest of the bottom and put the masking tape on. So this is what we're going for. Hopefully you can see it. Let me see if I put it this way where the light can get in there better. See, just bumpy. And I'm going to do that on the whole bottom. And then I am going to put masking tape on top of all of the wood skewers. And then I'm going to take some of this tissue paper and decoupage it all over the box. And when I do that, I'm going to keep it flat on the bottom because I want my bottom to be smooth so that it can sit on a counter. But I will just barely come over the bottom and keep it flat. And then on the sides, I'm going to give it some texture just because I want to. And then I can paint it. So I'm going to get all of the decoupage done and get the masking tape on the skewers and then I'm going to let that dry and I'll be back and we'll move on. Okay, I'm back and now we are going to work on our tool holding part. So we have our wire rack here and I'm just going to take off this cardboard piece. And because these gaps are so large and most tools are not that large, what I want to do is basically cut each one in half. And I want to make um, stabilizers so that our tools don't do too much slipping. Even though we put the, the texture on the bottom, we want to keep our tools in their spot. So what we're going to do is we are just going to measure from the wire to the bottom of the leg for, well, from the wire to the bot, this bottom of the leg is going to be sitting on in your box. So, um, and we're going to measure from there to there, and that is about four and a half inches. So, or if you, this is the way I usually measure it is from the table where my piece of cardboard will be sitting, my divider, from the table to the top of the wire. That's four and a half inches. So I am going to add an inch because I want a piece sticking up. So I am going to cut one for the back and one for the middle of this level at four and a half inches. Now just measure yours because they, they're going to be different sizes possibly than mine because they get a little bent or whatever. Um, and then for the, for the next one, put on the inches side, um, the next one on this one is three and a quarter inches. So I will make the back divider and the center divider. They are three and a quarter, so I'm going to make those four and a quarter. So five and a half, four and a quarter. And then this one is one and three quarters, so I'm going to make this two and three quarters. And this has a big angle to it, so the one in the very front is a little bit less than one and a quarter. So I'm going to make a support for the back, a divider for the middle, a support for the back, a divider for the middle, a support for the back, a divider for the middle. So we'll have six of them. I've got almost all of them done. And um, then what I did, once I got the piece of cardboard cut, now this is my last one for down here, and this is for the bottom, plus it's going to stick up an inch. So that's what I've got here. And um, then what I did was I took my very first one and I just held it on the um, wire rack we'll do it here it's easier kind of to see just kind of even it up and then what I did was I put a mark on each side of the wires and that's where we're going to cut little trenches for those wires to fit into and we're going to cut them down to the one inch mark just like that and then we're going to cut these all the way down to this one inch mark that we have here now I can tell you right now that this from this one inch mark down that's going to be too big and so what I will do is after I cut all of my little trenches in here I will shorten it up a little bit now this is corrugated cardboard I do like to have a piece of corrugated cardboard for my divider but 
this <laughs> I like it because it's more sturdy but this piece of corrugated cardboard is very very I don't know what to say I don't know if it's old or what but it's quite kind of flimsy or something but it's what I had so it's what I'm going to use and I am just cutting down where those wires were so that I can fit this onto my rack. Now once you um, have one of these cut, they're going to be different heights. You know, we've got the one and a, whatever they were, let's say one and a half, three and a half, four and a half, whatever. So they're different heights, but they're all going to be the same width. So just cut yourself two at four and a half, actually five and a half because we want it to stick up an inch and then two at four and a half and two at two and a half, you know, whatever your heights are and then cut one and once you cut one, use that one, set it on top of your next piece of cardboard. Well, actually we need to remove these first and because this cardboard is so thin, I can just rip these off um, most of your cardboards are going to be heavier, so just fold them all back and then use your scissors um, to go in and trim them all off. But I'm going to get these out of the way. So you will make one, and you will cut all of your sizes to fit, and then use this one as a template so that they're all the same. That way they stick out one way or the other, or maybe they're perfect, um, but they'll all be the same. And that just makes it easier. That way if you moved your cardboard a little bit or something, one way or the other, you don't have some of them sticking out this side, some of them sticking out that side, some of them perfect. They'll all be the same. And so I'm just going to remove this because this is the one inch that I want to stick up above my rack. And now this is going to fit in here just like this. And see now that that's going to hold any tools in the front it's going to hold them in the front because this is going to come all the way to the table or to the inside of your box and that's going to sit at the inside of your box and now any of your tools that are in there cannot go past that so if this was not here and you put a tool in there it could slip back that way and it's just a pain and if you're going to take the time to do this then you want it to be good when you're done now this one is a little bit too tall. It's holding my feet up off the table. It's about a quarter of an inch too tall. So I'm just going to go in and cut about a quarter of an inch off the bottom so that it fits. Just like that. And put it back in there and see if my Yep, now my feet are touching the bottom. Okay, so we've got this like this, but we don't want it to move. And especially the ones in the back, they're going to want to slide back underneath. So we're going to take a piece of cereal box, and these are all two inches. For, for every spot, I just cut a bunch of two-inch pieces of cereal box, and I'm going to cut exactly the same slices in them, just like this. And I'm going to go past that line just a little bit and that way if my one inch stick up part here because it's actually under the wire is where your one inch starts um, you can level them up at the top because we're going to glue these together we're going to have one is right side up and one will be upside down and that way they will kind of catch the wire between them so we're just going to cut these all like this and then like these ones, you will have to cut them off. Like that other cardboard that was so flimsy I could just rip off. But these ones you're just going to want to fold them back. And then just go in and trim them off. And like I said, I did go past the line a little bit. And then we're just going to go in the back and just cut them off.
and then the one on the bottom comes up from the bottom and there are our slits sticking out the top. Now these ones are going to go from the top down and we are going to glue those together. So now that one that goes from the top down, it is going to hold this from slipping back this way and coming right out. So this one being here is now going to hold this one in place. Just like that. And remember how I said you can cut those slots a little bit deeper? Um, and I did that, and it still is a little bit taller than the other. So if you want that, you can either cut off this piece, you can cut your slits a little bit, or you can just leave that stick up a little bit, however you want to do it. I don't want to leave it stick up because it's sticking up past my wires, so I'll trim off the top right there so that those two are even. And the way to do that is going to be hold them together and then just kind of put a mark where they are and then just cut that piece off so that way they'll be even at the top also and so on the ones that are right next to the next step I put these in the back and that holds it away from the step and the one that's in the front you can put it in the front or the back, it doesn't really make any difference. But the one that's at the back where this step is, you really need to put your one coming from the top to the bottom. You need to make sure that this goes right next to here so that this one cannot slip through. So we're gonna do it just like that. Here's the other one for the middle here. one of those on there and I'm going to put this one in the front and the only reason is because it will cover that up then and I won't see it and then our two taller ones just like that okay so now we have one right at the very back one in the middle one at the very back of the next step one in the middle one at the very back of the front step and one in the middle and then we're going to go ahead and we will have our second ones go from the top down just like that just like that just like this and again this one is in the back so it is going to go in the back like that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to glue all of these flaps that are sticking up here every one of these I'm going to put glue on and I'm going to put glue on every one of these so that when I put these together and squish them together, they will be glued here at the top and they will be glued here at the bottom all the way across. And then I just take some of our clamps that we bought. Remember these clamps, they work perfect. And I'm going to clamp each one and let them sit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue all of these in their spot just like this and clamp them up and let them dry and then I'll be back. Okay, I did want to just show you really quickly how I glued these. Um, I said that I was going to glue these flaps and I was going to glue these flaps down here. Well, really what I did was just take this one because the flaps of this are going to be up here and then you've got these flaps just take it out and then just glue the whole thing while it's out and that glues everything that you need to have glued so I thought that the way I explained it might have been kind of confusing where you thought that you had to try and get under there to get all of these flaps just take this one out and do the whole thing and that will encompass all of your flaps and then just put it in there like that and pinch them together. And then what I like to do is just make sure that I kind of go down between each one and press it, press them together really good because the clips don't go all the way to the bottom. 
and then I didn't have enough clips so I'm just doing I'm just clipping every other one and I'm putting the clip as far up the cardboard as I can um, because it's cardboard it is kind of squishing so it is letting the bottom make contact and that way it's kind of getting the most contact possible out of your clip and just do it like that and then just let them dry really well and then we will go to the next step okay I am back and I have this all decoupaged I've got a nice rough bottom to hold our tools a little steady and I did decoupage all of the corners and up and around brought it around the bottom so that um, I like to, when I decoupage anything, I always like to go around corners because that makes your corners more sturdy. And so all I need to do with this is it needs to be painted. And um, But I wanted to show you what it looks like as it is here. And then here is our inserts. And so I'm just going to, should have took these off before we started, but I'm going to just take off all of the clips that we're just giving it time to dry together and then I'll show you how these fit together and then I'll just need to go and paint it and then we will load it up whoops that one's stuck and we'll be all done with this but this is something I actually have one it's sitting right here next to me that I did probably six months to a year ago and I did it and I've used it because I wanted to see how it would work and I did not want I knew it would take time to put it together and I didn't want to put you guys through something that took a lot of time that just really did not work and as far as I'm concerned I really like the one that I have um, I use it all the time it is my tool caddy and all of my tools are in there and it has a lot of space and that is why I decided to come on here and show you um, how to make one because I think they work well now you can use some super glue and glue down each one of these um, shelves to your wires so that they don't move at all um, you could put some glue on the very bottom you could put some glue along the back and glue it to the wires um, you know you can make them more sturdy so that they're not so that they don't move at all I did not do that and the reason I did not do that is because if I have something that I want to store in here, now this these size compartments are pretty much, you know, big enough to fit anything, but you may have something that you want to store that is bigger than that. And if you do, or maybe even something that's smaller and you want it to stand up nice and straight, you can slide these a little bit to make your little compartment smaller, to make your compartments larger, and therefore I don't... I don't want to connect mine down at all um, except that um, maybe the back one because they're not really going anywhere I will probably just tie a string or put some glue on the back one on each of the compartments just to put them but then again maybe not um, you know once you put your stuff in there they sit really pretty well but but that's the reason that I don't because I do want them to be adjustable and um, so I'm just going to leave them just like that. Now we have room over here, and this is where we can put taller things, like our cutting board that we use as a cutting mat. That will fit right in there, and those are not in the way. And so, actually, I use it like this, but... Um, so you can... That's, that's why we have this space over here, and that is why I put this over to this edge. But it, you can always, you know, put it wherever you want. Now, I am going to show you one thing that... Um, just so that you know because this box I built because I needed to give you a box that you could build that would fit this but the one that I have and it is a mess right now but I'm gonna give you a quick peek at it anyways um, the one that I have I had a box that was pretty much the size of the um, whatever you call this, the little shelving unit. And it, again, it was a little bit smaller, so I have this room to put all of this over here. But I have all of my skewers in here. Um, I just have all sorts of things, and like I said, it's a mess. I've kind of, um, you know, just thrown stuff in there. But 
um, you know, even tall things like this flower that I just want to stand up. I've got my pencils in here. You know, I've got some markers in here, all of my um, pliers and everything. I've got my uh, cutting knives in here. And um, so I've even, my glue sticks do not fit in there, but I do usually leave them just like that. So this is my tool caddy, and I just made this in a box. I hit a box, the box fit. I just cut this box down to hold this container. So if you can find a box that's approximately 11 by 11, or even a little bit larger, I have a box here that's 12 by 12, I think. And so this would work. I just have an inch all the way around, and I could use that as upright storage, pull it forward and use it for storage in the back, and that would take up the extra few inches on each side. And so you don't have to build this box. You can actually just build this insert and insert it into any box that you can fit it into. But I wanted to show you if you didn't have a box that would fit, and in order to be able to do this start to finish, I wanted to show you how you could do it with just one piece of foam core. And, you know, it's nice. It's sturdy. Once I get it done, it's going to look nice. And actually, once I get it done, I may switch all of my tools over to this one because I'm going to do this one in brown and gold. And I'm probably going to like the way it looks better. So, but I will come back after I get it all painted and we'll drop all of our tools in here so that you can see how it looks that way. And then we will be all finished with this. I'll let you know what we need for next week. So I'll be back just shortly. Okay, I am back and I have my tool caddy all put back together and it's all dry. So this is what it looks like. And I just painted it brown first and then I dry brushed on some tan then some kind of a golden yellow, and then a maroon, and kind of got this Papa look, thinks it looks a little bit like wood, and um, then I just set my thing inside, and so I am going to take the tools out of my old tool caddy and put them in my new tool caddy, and just kind of show you like how I put it together and how you can make it work. So for the extra side that we the little bit of extra space that we have on the side we can put some of our taller things like our cutting board and I have the um the spat the tool that we have here what is it called the, the chopper scraper that we had bought and that fits nicely right there along the edge also so anything that we have that's tall I have my combs which I actually could take out of the package and put them in or I can just leave them in the package and then just slide them right in there just like that so now that is pushing this forward so I don't think I really want to do that I'm just going to take them out and put them in the way that they are just like this or maybe I'll put them because I have the spatula behind here I think that I'm going to stack them up in the back like this and these two are a little bit smaller, so I'm going to put them in my smaller sections here. Now, what I probably am going to do is the ones that are back right next to the wire, I'm going to put like a, a twist tie on those just to hold those back there. And then just leave the middle ones movable so that I can um, make them big enough to hold what I want them to hold. I think I'll put those right in there. And um, then I have my... Uh, screwdrivers here and what I'm going to do with these because I like them in the front that's where they are in my old caddy I'm going to just bend this one because I really want this to be in the middle so I'm going to take this last one right here and I'm just going to bend that over a little bit like that because then my screwdrivers or my pokey tools is what we have them for they will fit right in there so and then I just have my tall things like my um rulers here and then I have my skewers and I put those in the back also I think I'm gonna move the combs put those down here for a minute and you'll just have to get it however you like it but since my other one is kind of set up this way I want to set this one up this way so that I know where everything is at just drop those in there and drop those in there and my scissors I keep in the middle section here 
And then I even do things like I have my staples and I just set those like right there. And here is my tool um, for our ball tool. So I'll just put that in there. And then my all of my different cutters I just put in like this so that I have those all together and my um, hole punch fits in there nicely that's part of the reason I like this in the middle is because it holds those up and down really nicely and then my um, my knives put those right in here where my scissors are and I even have a plastic spoon that I used for something I have my compass which I think I'll put there like that. I have my glue sticks, which I just keep a couple of glue sticks just kind of sitting right here in the front like this. And I have just some cardboard that I use for spreading things around. I'm just gonna put that right there. And my little staples for the little stapler we bought when we started the series. And then my little stapler I'm gonna put right there. And then I have some credit cards or you know room cards and that type of thing I keep these whenever I get them in the mail and I'm just gonna drop those right down in there and my paint brush my um, foam brush because I like the foam brushes in there better than in my paintbrush caddy because they take up so much room and then I have some skewers that I've already used and broken those off so I'm going to put those closer to the front so that I can get to them. And the rest of these skewers I can put right in here. There we go. And then I just take all of my clips and I just line them up across the back just like this. And I have our little sander here. That one goes in there. And there's another comb. So it holds a whole lot. I have a permanent marker there. And another one of my knives. Put those like that. Here is our, our white pen that we use for using for white out. And here is a tool that I made. Can't even remember exactly what for right now, but I'm gonna keep that in there also. And then I even have some of my, the paper clips that I made to dry things. These are just paper clips that I've bent to dry things. And I just take those and stick those in one compartment so I have them. I have my bead dryer that has some of these too, but sometimes I don't have my bead dryer pulled out, but I have my toolbox pulled out. And I need, I've made something that I need to dry, so it's nice to have some of those in there. And this is just something that I got at, and if you see any or you have any, um, these I got at a secondhand store. They're like nut removers or something, but I think that they would work really good as like a little ball tool or something. So I'm just going to stick those in there. And um, our bead roller fits nicely in there. And a permanent marker, a nice big fat black one, another plastic spoon, and then this is the sieve that we bought, so I'll just put that in there too. And then in the back, I do keep my saw just right between, oh, maybe I made this too tight, because the other one was just a box, um, it's a little bit bigger than this, but we'll put our saw over there. And then we've got our little um, edge rippers and just a little piece of acetate and put those in there on the side. The pencils that we bought when we made our, our ribbon roll. This is one of the cow lily flowers that we made. The nonstick spatula that we purchased to use with our hot glue gun. And some more of our pencils. And I have more of the um, clothespins, but I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me put them all there. But get all of the pencils in here. 
just like that and then like I even have one of my rollers just because I had it pulled out and I just had that sitting on top here just like this now that's not really where I keep it I really keep it in my thing but you know you can just you know set things on top or whatever too and then I have a few more of my foam brushes so it holds a lot and you know you can adjust it forward and backward to hold whatever it is that you want it to hold and so that is our tool caddy so I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you make one of these I hope it works well for you and that you really enjoy it so I know that I really do like it like I said I made mine about six months to a year ago because I wanted to make sure it was going to hold up you know and make sure that it was actually going to fit things and it does it works really well so I'm going to show you what we need for next week we have right now $42.50 in the bank and so for next week what we are going to buy is we are going to buy from the Dollar Tree these little Jenga blocks okay so that's what we're going to need for next week and then we'll need some of our other supplies and what we're also going to buy is now I got mine at Joann's because I had a 50% off two items two 50% off coupons is what I had so I bought this ink set and it was ten dollars and I bought some stays on black permanent ink and it was also ten dollars but I got them both for five now what I'm going to do because of our budget and there's no guarantee that you have a coupon or have a Joann's is I stays on is pretty much ten dollars no matter where you get it so we're going to count this as ten dollars and you can get these same hampton art ink pads at walmart for 6.98 or something like that so seven dollars so i'm going to take 17 dollars off of our bank for these just in case you don't have a coupon and can't get them on sale that's full price if you can get them on sale use the difference to buy yourself something else that you would like now i wanted to say with with the colored ink pads get these little ones because you know you, I've learned that you're supposed to take the ink to the stamp not the stamp to the ink so if you have these little ink pads even if you have a huge stamp you're supposed to take the ink pad and pat it on to lay the flat the your stamp down flat and pat the ink on top of it because you don't get as much all over the edges of your stamp so the little ones will work fine whether you have a large stamp that you're trying to ink a small stamp that you're trying to ink they work great for edging um, edging your papers and stuff and um, you know now I wouldn't edge them with your pad I would use a makeup sponge dab it on there but it's big enough to to fill up the whole end of your makeup sponge um, dab it on there and then do the edge because you don't want to ruin the top of your pad so so don't really use them to edge it but use the color to edge it with a makeup sponge but I thought it was time we you know we've saved that much money and I thought it was time for us to have some real ink pads that you know we don't have to refresh every time that we want to use them although the ink pads that we made if they dry up if you have not used all of the ink on them all you have to do is on your colored ones just put a little bit more of your hand sanitizer mix it in really well maybe turn it upside down and let it sit for a little bit and it will refresh itself because the color is still there it's just dried out but with these we shouldn't have to deal with that so again a stays on and this one so we're going to count this as $17 plus our Jenga block so we are going to take $18 off of our bank for next week and this is what we'll need so I hope that you enjoyed this week's video I had fun making this and I really do like using it and so and actually mine was getting kind of full so even though I've changed everything over to here I will wind up using the other one too because any more tools that we get I'm gonna to have to have a place to get to put them so Thanks again for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it was kind of long, but, you know, I really wanted to show you the whole process as much as I could. Um, so thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.